Hello fellow Arkham Forge mapsmiths, I'm James with Knights of the Smith's Dinner Table, just returning once again for another Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to cover tiling and how the, some of the more advanced ways that you can do it. So, first off, I'm going to apologize. I've had a cold for the past week or so. I might sound a little stuffy and I apologize for that. Also, if I look a little worn out, I am. My wife and I just had a baby two days ago, so I'm a little without sleep and rest, but I'll do the best I can to try and give you guys a great video today. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, I've already got the first thing here is a keep that I put together probably in about an hour last night at the hospital. Um, just the basic outline using a lot of the tips and tricks that I showed you guys in the walls video. And from there, I'm going to go ahead and I've already tiled the outside just to kind of get ahead of everything. And I'm save the inside for what we're going to do today. So the first thing we're going to do is all this big open area we're going to take care of first. And it's important to note that as we're doing it, you're going to notice something that I do a little differently than a lot of people. A lot of people will just grab, drag all the way across, and then fill in on top where they are. I don't do that, and the reason being is because when you do multiple levels, there's a little trick I'm going to show you a little later in the video for what I like to do inside of buildings. So what we're going to do is we're going to match the grass that's outside, which if I remember right is this one here. And yep, it matches pretty perfectly. So we're going to start with the basic drag and fill sections here. So we're going to do a quick fill all the way around. And yeah, I know that like here in part of the wall in the building, I am kind of filtering in. And I'll show you how to fix that here in a bit because we're just going to cover right over that. So, and the nice thing about the tiles is that you can cover large sections of the map at a time just like this. Now, if you look, when I'm getting going around the tower here of the keep, I'm not going inside the, uh, what is it, 10 by 10 square that it's in. And there's a reason for that. Now, I know a lot of you are going to think, hey, he's just going to fill it in with a brush. Actually, I'm not. There's another trick I'm going to show you. And the reason being is that the brush uses a lot of resources when you use it. So I like to use as little of the brush as possible when I'm making my maps. Um, especially for those of us who have low-end machines, the brush can be really taxing on your GPU. So go ahead and let's finish up here. As you can see, I've just about got everything covered that I need to cover for the grass on the outside. We'll scroll out so you can see. Now all the sections on the insides, as you can see, I've left gray. So to fill in these sections right here, we're going to switch to the Polygon tool. I absolutely love the Polygon tool. This is one of the greatest things that I think Nathan and the team added to it. So what we're going to do is, as you can see, I just kind of, whoops, let me hit escape. Control Z. I meant to do that a slightly different way. So I hold control there to match the point. And then I'm going to come down and I'm not holding control at this point. I'm just kind of loosely hitting things until I get down here. Then I hit control, come over to here, and then I come up here. And make sure that you don't click on a point that you've already clicked on, because what that does is it completely blanks everything out. Then I right click to release. And as you can see, well, it's not an actual curve, and you can't see it because of the wall at the moment. The wall hides the kind of jagged edge from the polygon perfectly, and you haven't used a brush. Now, the reason why we don't use a brush for a lot of this right now is if you want to go up or down levels, the brush does not cast a shadow yet, and that's going to be important when you're doing multiple levels, and you want the levels above to cast a shadow on the levels below. But let's go ahead and continue. Now, you're going to have to click on your asset every time that you are adding it because you have to right click to release it so you're gonna to have to come back and click again and like I said here when I'm doing these round sections I am NOT holding the control button I know that in my last video I said I absolutely love the control button and I do and when I need to center it to a to the grid I actually do hold the control and that brings everything up there Back here, we got one more section to do with this. To there, to there, right click. And as you can see, it perfectly fills in around that. So with the square buildings, this is a set of stables that we're gonna fill in. This is a barracks that we're gonna fill in. And then we got a little church here because I mean, after all, why not? So come down here, done, fill. And as you can see, 
it does work with the small sections as well. It actually works with small sections a whole lot better than the big sections. Um, just because there's a bigger chance of things not filling in. So about there, there, there. And I'm going to go ahead and, whoops, did not mean to do that. Forgot to click my thing there. One more little section that I got to do up here. Now, scroll back out. Oops, sorry about that. Didn't mean to zoom in suddenly like that. Um, as you can see, it, from a distance, and even when you get down to where you're closed in, it hides the jagged edge almost perfectly everywhere that I have gone to. Here, here, back up around the circle again. Now, one of the things I was talking about earlier is we're actually going to do it over here first. So we're going to give a nice dirt floor here for the inside of the stables. Um, this one kind of looks good. Now, you can still do if you don't like switching back and forth between the tools, you can still do the polygon for rectangles, squares, triangles, what have you. Um, I usually switch back and forth, but a lot of times I don't really pay attention. Then we're going to go up a level. Now this is going to be the second story, and this is where we're going to have the hayloft. So I'm going to switch tile types to floor, wood. A lot of the tiles and everything you're going to see, I'm going to try and stick to what's in the wildlands and the essentials, but you'll probably see over here some stuff that you don't see normally. Um, like for instance, I mean, you've got the magic. I think that's part of the base set. Down here, I've got my own. This is Apocalypse, and I'll show that stuff later. Uh, Saline, this is in the set that I put up on the on the uh, store in the community section. So, and as you can see, if you haven't downloaded it yet, all kinds of floors there. And I'll be using them in later maps and things like that. But for now, I'm going to stick to the basic stuff. So like I said, we're going to switch to a war wood floor, get kind of the old wooden tile here. Now, if you notice, I did not cover this bottom section here. And the reason being, and I'm not going to do it today, well, when I come back to this map and we're doing object placement, you'll see why I left this open. And it's going to be the same thing everywhere. One of the reasons is, is I have some ladder objects that I'll put here, and it'll be placed on the bottom. You'll still be able to see it, so that way when you've got characters up top, characters down below, they can see both depending on where they're at and what's covered. So we'll come down here. Now this is a barracks. Let's see what we can find here to put on the floor. Let's go down to the first floor again. Um, no... Stone tile seems like it would be appropriate for a barracks building. So I'm going to switch to tiling. Nah, I don't really like that one. Um, how about cobblestone? It kind, of, whoops, kind of fits what I've done already with the walls. So we got a nice cobble, cobble, <laughs> excuse me, cobblestone floor. We're going to go up a level. Now this time, what you're going to see is, I'm going to click on the same tile type. When you're working with multiple floors, there's a trick that you can do where, let me move this out a little bit, you go to your settings, you go to the advanced section, and right up here, hide tiles on lower levels. If you're not sure you've covered something, so let's say I do this, and because the, the tiling is very close, now this isn't going to be the floor I use for the second level. But because the tile color is very similar, it can sometimes, if you're zoomed out, you may not notice it, what have you. If you click hide tiles on the lower levels, everything below the current level that you're working on disappears. So that way you know where you're at on your tiling. So let's uncheck that. We're going to delete this. Back to here. Done. And we're going to go down to wood because, you know, Medieval fantasy buildings. Yeah, the first floor might have stone, and unless it's a castle or a keep, let's be honest, it's probably going to be a wood floor. So I'm going to tile all the way over to here, and I'm going to tile to here. And then what I'm going to do 
is, and I know this is going back to last week with repeatables, this is that way I know where I'm at. And this is going to be one of the few, few things in this video where I don't do exactly what I was talking about. So we're going to use the rope as a rail. Drag it down there. And as you can see, it kind of covers up. So if you want to hide that, and I typically do just because I'm a perfectionist, go back to here. You can grab this, cover it back up, and perfect. Then we're going to go down a section. And as you can see, the shadowing from above is showing that this is open, mainly because we don't have a roof. When we go up to the third floor, there's no walls or anything up here. I'll get to roofs here in a little bit. So we're going to go back down. And I'm once again going to put like a little wall here. And I typically match the exterior wall for something like this. This is going to be a stairwell. Then we're going to go to objects. Now you can use the stairs that I put in the pack or let's go to structures. There it is. Click on that and stairs going to be stone stairs. Then I take these suckers, I'll rotate them around, I'll slide them over, hold control to center them. And then because they go over top the wall, this is something that I'll cover again once we get into the objects. For stairs, I always move them to the bottom. And I know that right here it kind of hides it, but this is kind of important for, for floors and tiling and everything. So we're going to go back up a floor. And what happens now is it looks like you've got a little ledge there at the top where the landing is. So the stairs come up, and as you can see, now I'm going to go back to my tokens. And what's going to happen here is... If you're wondering where I got these tokens, I got them from Devon Knight. Um, if you just Google Devon Knight, it's immortalknights.com, I believe. I'll double check. I'll put it in the links down below. No, look, an autosave. So we're going to throw a token on here. I'm going to resize them because I didn't take the time to resize when I was making the pack. And I'll put them down here. So when you're running, if you're running like a virtual tabletop like I do, where you, if you've seen the pictures of my layout, I've got the TV up on the wall and everything. So the way this relates to the tiling is, is when a character's downstairs, you can see him right there. Perfect. You got a guy up above. He can take a swing. Uh, let's just throw this dwarf guy here. So he can move up and you know he's that this guy's down below. This guy's up above. You can determine line of sight pretty easily because if this guy was here. And as you can see, he disappears because of the nice way that the tiles work in this. So let's get rid of these guys. Now this shadow or this bright area is going to disappear when I put a roof on. And the roof is going to be one of the last things I cover. So as you can see, lower floor, cobblestone, upper floor, wood. You could add walls and everything in here from there. And I will between now and the next video because when I do the objects and everything, there's a lot I've got to talk about with objects. So then we come up here to the trickier parts. Once again, go back to tiles. This is going to be a stone floor cobblestone. We're going to switch to polygon. Circles are always tricky. There's no circle tool for tiles or anything yet. I don't know if there is going to be one, but hey, if it comes, it comes. If not, you've always got my tips and tricks. So we're going to start here. And if you notice, I am not touching the control button at all because this is a circle. So you just kind of drag it around. Make sure you kind of stay centered in the wall when you're doing this. And while right now, as you can see, it's not a perfect circle, what's going to happen is once I'm done with it, go ahead and get up here. And it looks like I'm on the second floor, so let's do this. Control, let's get rid of this. Let me start over on the bottom floor because I just realized the door here is where I changed things a little bit. So let's go back, start here, and just start. Oops. Just kind of start working our way around. Now, you don't want to get too far in between because then you'll have big gaps. I wouldn't say more than a square, square and a half apart. Or hexes if you're using hexes. Isometric, I don't play with isometric much. I am going to play with it so I can learn, so I can do a tips and tricks tutorial and everything. Um, so look for that in the future. And it's not going to be immediate or anything. But I do use hexes for games like Torque, Deadlands, things like that. And now, so when we get up to here, I'm going to do one more that's not. I'm going to match. 
match. I did hit control for that section because I want a nice flat surface there where it meets the grass. And here we go. So we're going to go on around. So as you can see, it is kind of sticking above the wall like it was on the upper level. You right click and there it is. Once again, a nice perfect looking circle that's not perfect. Not in the least perfect, but it appears to be perfect because it's well hidden by the walls. Then we got the place over here where we'll put the doors, doors and stuff I'll cover in objects next week. So let's go upstairs. Now, we're going to have a stairwell that comes up. I'm thinking we're going to put a nice, let me do this. I'm going to go ahead and throw the, and now this tower I think is four or five levels in height. I'm not going to go through every one. I'll tie all that so that way I'm not wasting your time later. So we'll go back to structures. We're going to have a nice little spiral staircase. Um, rotate it. So there's the top. Okay. Now this is going to be important here in a bit. So let's move it to the bottom. Go back. And wait a second. That didn't move it to the bottom. Ah. That's why. Let's move it down a level. Now move it to the bottom. So as you can see, it's kind of partially occluded by the walls. That's fine. That's not going to be anything major. And like any good spiral staircase, it's going to have the wall surrounding it. So go back. Now, as you can see when we're doing the walls here on circular walls, you just kind of have to, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and this. And then this one here, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I'm going to do this different way. So we're going to do this to this. Whoops. And if you guys remember my little trick from last week. Nicely centered there. Draw there. Then we're going to draw there. Okay, so let's pull these all out. Okay, and one more wall down the center. So now we got the nice spiral staircase that's going up. I think it is. We're just going to assume it's going up for now. I'm, I'm not paying that much attention because I'm trying to move through this quickly so I can show you guys as much as possible and not run a huge amount of time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we go back up a level. Now this is where it gets kind of tricky. So this is going to be where the stairs come up, right? So we'll go back to the tiles and floor cobblestone. This is a tower. It makes sense to have stone floors. So we're just going to go with that. Go to the polygon center. So we're going to come around. Now, here's where you got to kind of remember where you're at. So, I know I've got it covered up right now. However, when we get to here, then we're going to go to here, 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 stop. Then what I'm going to do is, now this is where we're going to have a little fun. Um, so we got the stairs coming up, nice spiral staircase. Spiral staircases and other staircases I'm going to cover later, but this is a trick that if you have a staircase that continues all the way up or a stairwell like in a modern building, you can't use this open tile trick. You're just going to want to put a flat, um, excuse me, a flat area there, cover it, throw the stairs on top, and then when they add the portals and everything later, that will take care of it. But in the meantime, say this was only a two-story two tower, this is how we'd do it. But you can see it got the opening, and then what we will... Go back to repeatables, walls, cobblestone, then 
go there, and then I'm going to drag this out to there. Center, center. Okay, so once again, we have this little section here that when we go back to tiles, go to polygon. Oops, sorry about that. So we're on polygon. We're going to start here, come out, 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 out. Now, yes, I know. However, and that didn't work. So let's undo that. Oops, I undid the wall. So let's redo the wall and try again. That's the beauty of the hotkeys that they have. So we're going to do that one, release, hit this again, start here, come down, and release. And it looks like I kind of messed up. So we can control Z that. Now it's always important that when you're doing stuff like this, always kind of zoom in. So that way you can see when you haven't covered something. And we're going to leave that one there alone as it is. Now for the fun one, water. Water, you can do a couple of different ways. I'm just going to show you the, the fairly simple way, and then I'm going to get into brushing. So say we want a, actually, let's do the roads first. So we're going to go back to, the reason being is because there's something I'm going to show you with water that I need to have the roads done. Oops that I need to have the road sound first. So we got our road going there. Now here's where the polygons really start to shine again. So, because roads, especially back in the day, weren't real accurately drawn, use your polygon tool. And as you can see, it kind of gives you the rough look of a road there. Now I know that right now it's got a very sharp edge and everything, we're gonna fix that. And that's where the brushes finally come into play. I know I've shown you how to do everything without the brush so far, and like I said, the reason is because of the shadowing effects from above down to below. Then we come back to here. We're going to stop there, there. Then we're going to kind of give a... semi-rounded effect to it. Okay. Then we got the church down here, because I mean, who in medieval fantasy doesn't like going to church? And if you notice, I'm making the roads eh, mostly wider at the end, and I really should do that up here, because I kind of did not make it very wide there at the end. So, and I'm sure you're thinking right now, so James, these are like fairly straight, fairly regular looking roads at the moment. So what we're going to do is once we have that, then we're going to switch to the brush. Now the brush exists. <coughs> Excuse me. Once again, getting over a cold. I apologize. So now's where the brush exists. So we've got the brush. Select your color. Then leave the transparency alone for now. Transparency is for when you really want to get into some some of the higher, really high end stuff, and that's going to be stuff that I'm going to show you later, where you have multi levels. Um, my favorite being a ship that I did, a shipwreck for one of my recent games, and I'll show you guys how I did that because that's going to be multi level uh, shading and things like that. But for the meantime, we got the brush, got the dirt, and as you can see. We got a nice solid, and if we were to just draw out, let's zoom in, you've got a really hard line defining it there. We don't want that. So then we're going to come down here and we're going to soften that brush. Now there's only two settings for the soften brush. There's either the hard brush or the soft brush. And then we're going to increase, oops, that's too much. We're going to increase the size a little bit to make it a little easier to see as we're working with it. So over here, as you can see, I've got a soft brush. And unlike that hard brush that I showed you earlier, it just kind of blends in to the other one. So we're going to start here. 
and kind of trace. Don't go too far off the edge. Otherwise, you start getting a little weird with some of this stuff. Like you can really widen your roads and your paths if you get too far off. I like to use just the edge of the brush, even when I use a big brush like this. Now, when you get up to places like this, just go up until you're real close to meeting the straight edge there, and then let off the brush. Here, whoops, I came out too far. Let me do this. So we're going to have to widen this just a little bit. It uh, doesn't look too hateful, so we'll leave it as is for now. I'm sure I'll go back and fix it later. So anyway, as you can see, I'm tracing, giving a nice smooth edge and blended, more importantly, blended edge to my roads and taking out all the sharp angles and everything like that because, as I said, a naturally worn road does not have sharp angles. Lines are an unnatural thing that we humans have created. Come back up here, kind of zoom in a little bit, and then, yeah, I know I widened it, but this is to the stables, so not a big deal. You gotta pick and choose the times when you're gonna be ultra picky. And honestly, a little bit of slop when you're making a map adds a little bit more to the authenticity than anything. So, come back up here, we're going to finish tracing things out, then I'm going to do a water. I'm sure you guys saw earlier that at the north side of this place, I've got a little stream of water coming in, and, oh, I forgot to add the road, no I didn't, there it is, thought I forgot to add the road to the barracks. I know sometimes I ramble and I apologize for that. So we come on down and I got a little sloppy there, but like I said, sometimes sloppy's not bad. The big deal is, and the big deal is to make sure that you take all these sharp edges out. Now, as you can see, very little brushwork there. I know it seems like a lot, but really there's not a whole lot of brushwork there, and even the lower end machines can handle the brushwork that I've done so far. So then we're going to add water. Right now I've got the dirty stream water. Scroll down here. So always, always, always start with your tile. Then we're going to switch to polygon. We're going to create a little, little pond here. And here it's especially important not to be super precise on anything, just because nature. All right, then we're going to switch to the brush. Come in here and add that soft edge to the water. And zoom in, and as you can see, there's a nice soft edge to the water. There's a few other things, a few more advanced things that are really tough to pull off, and you have to keep working back and forth to make this look even more realistic. But in all honesty, um, most of us go for usable, looks good, then we're quick. I will go over some of the more technical aspects of the tiling and stuff when I go back and I show you how to do the multi-tier or multi-level tiling. Um, especially like with things like shipwrecks, anything that's underwater, you kind of want to give more appearance to, because if you had just, if this was all underwater, you'd want to blue haze over it. There is a way to do that. I'll cover that in a later video. In the meantime, my next video is going to be about object placement and things like that. Um, over the, over the course of the next few videos, primarily going to be object placement and adding in a few extra tiling and, and repeatable stuff as I can. Uh, other than that, if you like this video, please feel free to click like down at the bottom, share, become a subscriber. Any other questions, go ahead and fill them in in the comments. I'll do the best I can. You can also find me on Discord as James, uh, James Smith, I believe. Let me double check here. 
Yes, I am James Smith on the Arkham Forge Discord channel, and you can also reach me on Facebook under the same thing on the Arkham Forge Users Group. Got any questions or anything? Like I said, hit them in the comments down below, and have a great night. See you next time, folks.